Ah, Venice in the sun, is there anything better? Well, I didn't get to enjoy this for the first five days because my butt was firmly in quarantine. Hey guys, welcome back. If you are not familiar with my channel or who I am, my name is Catherine. Um, I noticed in the last two weeks there's been like a huge spike in subscribers. So if you're watching this, thank you so much for subscribing. Um, you may have also noticed that there's quite a bit of seaweed on my channel, which might be a bit strange. And that's because I am one of the only people in the world to be obsessed with seaweed and seagrass in architecture to the extent that I am. I know, what, what a career. This is totally what my parents dreamed for me when I was little. Uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, when you grow up, just get your hands deep in that seaweed and build buildings out of them. No, but um, this is a super weird and super nerdy niche that I have. Um, and recently I was actually invited to go to Venice as a part of the biennial for this research exhibition, uh, Non-Extract Architecture. I was actually invited to this before the pandemic, but because of the pandemic, the biennial was postponed, and then so was this research project to an extent. They've just come out with a book from the last year's research that they continued during the pandemic. Um, but they invited me to come down and be in Venice for two weeks almost to just do my thing, do what I love to do. and. Um, so I went down to Venice to look at the seaweed and seagrass situation and try and figure out how we could implement it into architecture. I'm sitting here in quarantine and, you know, it really could be worse. Look at these really beautiful exposed beams in this Airbnb. Um, and another solution that I really noticed that was really from something I used actually in my heritage class are these awesome window solutions. So have a look. We've got a window here. If I open it. So this is the original window frame and shutters. And you can see actually all these shutters are very, very old. But we have a nice new window here that prevents heat loss that's installed on the inside. So it's a great way to preserve the original windows while at the same time making sure that your indoor climate is a lot more comfortable. Now, I may have gotten a little overenthusiastic when I was first contacted about this because they asked me to put together a proposal and they mentioned that for this research project, all of their research was printed out on paper made from seaweed, from invasive lagoon seaweed. So, of course, I geeked out a little bit hearing this and um, I decided I would not print out my research on this paper solely. I decided I wanted to hand draft a map of Venice and try and map some of the species that I was seeing as I was going through Venice. If you're not familiar with architecture, hand drafting is a very precise form of hand drawing. I have a hand drafting video actually from RuneScape in my post history. But basically, it's a measured type of drawing, so everything really, really needs to be precise. And it takes a really, really long time. So during quarantine, I got a lot of the paper and I started hand drafting this massive map. But that wasn't enough. Um, as some of you guys know, I like to go around and sketch from observation to better understand context and where I am and what's going on in the city. So I decided I would turn a lot of this loose leaf paper into a sketchbook. I have never bound a book before in my life. So to compress my book, I don't quite have a binder, so chair it is. I didn't have cardboard except for the box of paper. So I basically took the extra paper wrapping the box as well as the box itself and tore that up and used that as the base for my book. So all of quarantine was spent agonizing <laughs> over drawing and 
making this sketchbook um, as well as my first material tests in this beautiful apartment. Now, I didn't just use my sketchbook for sketching. I also pressed a lot of seaweed samples into the paper itself, dried them, and then I put it in the sketchbook as well um, to kind of show just the di different diversity of species. I couldn't recognize and name all of these species, so actually, if you know some of them, please reach out. After being able to break quarantine, I moved all of my work with Polina, the woman who is in charge of pretty much everything at the foundation, to the VAC Zatere building. I upped my material sample production of leatherizing this kelp species that I found. So basically Venice has a ton of different seaweed diversity and seagrass. Um, there are three different seagrass species and then there are multiple, multiple seaweed species, incredible biodiversity. And seaweed is actually featured in some regional dishes. Uh, sea lettuce is featured in some regional dishes. So people already have sort of a history and tradition of eating it. But because of how many boats there are in Venice, some of these boats have tracked in spores from Asia that are invasive. So we have Japanese knotweed, which is a sargassum seaweed species that's kind of taken over the lagoon. And there's also wakame, um, which is a type of kelp, edible kelp, that has also begun to take over completely parts of the lagoon. And these species, they get tangled up in the boat rudders. They kind of drift off and form these like massive islands. So I kind of wanted to try my leatherizing technique on the wakame because I could see that there were these huge, huge leaves of kelp. But that wasn't enough. I've been thinking all lockdown about the possibility of using kelp as an upholstery material because eelgrass, aka seagrass, was traditionally used as an upholstery stuffing material for a really long time. I actually took sewing classes for the first time during the pandemic and Rose, um, my sewing teacher, helped me put together a seaweed leather bag. And in the process, she taught me how to kind of work with the material from a textile perspective. Sewing this has literally been the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And look at how uneven my stitches are. I'm so unhappy with this. You know, I can't draw straight, so I'm not sure why I thought I'd ever be able to sew straight. So all in all, I was able to complete one hand-drafted map of seaweed species, multiple seaweed pressings, multiple sketches in a hand-bound book that I made of seaweed paper, and finally, one seaweed stool made from kelp and stuffed with seagrass made with one of the residents, Davide, who helped me make the frame of the stool out of wood. At the end of the day, I wasn't able to learn everything about the lagoon that I had hoped. So my seaweed sketchbook is still unfinished. I finished about half of it, about 20 pages, but I would like to go back someday and learn more about this. I mean, 12 days is not a lot of time, especially when you're spending five of those days in quarantine. So I would definitely like to go back.